there's been some interest lately about pox leads and different setups and I built this last winter actually about in November took it out for three or four trips last year this is probably going to be the last trip on this one I've got a pair of sled that I'm putting together next uh, this one's going to get transferred over to Lazarus He's sitting over there chilling out in the snow but pretty much this is all I, this is how I pack it um, a lot of folks like to use custom made boxes and bags um, I like the versatility one this is my, my camp shelter anyway this tarp it's a 9x9 nine, nine nine canvas and I keep three leather straps which is just basically some one inch wide belts I made with roller buckles on them and I fold the tarp in half, half lay it in the bottom of the sled, pack all the gear in it fold it over into itself and cinch the buckles around it and keep one bungee cord on it just for my snowshoes uh, sometimes you get into some snow which you need your shoes and next it's easier without them and it just you don't have to unlace the whole thing to get those on and off the sled my lacing I use I like this plain old sisal rope uh, one because it doesn't freeze up when it gets wet it's not the strongest rope in the world by any means but it doesn't freeze and that's what I like about it um, and the texture of it you know it's got that really coarse texture it's really easy to work with wearing gloves and it does get a nice bite on that canvas when it's the canvas is iced up and wet and packed with snow <coughs> again this is just a China Mart cheap old kid sled I think it was about six bucks and I probably got about oh, ten bucks for the hardware on it nothing but just some little eyelets put into the outside edge and then two more in the front and that's my toe strap which you got broke on this trip uh, I used to have traces on this but I took them off and I'd wear a waist belt but I prefer the just the plain strap that gives you a little bit of that tug and pull motion sometimes when especially going uphill it allows that gives you a little bit better pull on the sled as it, as it sliding along so it's a bit sh too short right now it keeps hitting the, my sled comes up and hits the tails of my shoes now with the dreaded downhill what I've done is I keep this rope here about an extra 15 feet of rope at the bottom of it and so I don't have to unrig it or move anything I just use that as the downhill and let the sled go ahead of me and then I just walk behind it and just kind of guide it by the tail and that's pretty much my sled um, we'll open her up here in a little bit and kind of get into it a little bit I brought some new gear to play with uh, we'll see how some of it goes out uh, if it doesn't work out too well some of it might end up on the trade blanket but we'll see kind of a unique tool I brought along I got in horse trade there on the forum uh, these pretty much went out of production 1986 but this is a uh, Air Force and some army air crew winner part of the survival kit that goes with them um, if you want the stock number and all that information I can get it for you later on but it's kind of a cool setup you got pretty healthy saw and kind of a partial machete which is pretty dull um, I've never tried to sharpen it this is actually only the second time I've ever had it out and then you got this aluminum snow shovel it's got a little brackets there that you undo the big wing nut just lock it in the handle there so um, I did cook on it once this does make for a pretty good cook grill just put it over the fire and throwed some eggs on it and cooked them up but we're going to actually try to get some snow moved here and get the ground quite not so wet for us and we'll keep on
Yeah. Better for a snowshoe shovel. Definitely be better for building igloo blocks or something along those lines. Back to the saw. There's more saws, more suited for cutting snow, making snow shelters. Along those lines. And that it excels pretty good at. Um, maybe come January when this snow up here gets really hard and heavy packed and frozen, we're going to bring it back out and give her another shot. Uh, it's not very sharp because uh, that does only have just a an actual true single bevel this side's flat this side's sharp and not very sharp at that but I've never sharpened it or done anything with it but as a saw well, it's excellent the handle ergonomics are pretty good especially in frozen wood So that part of it, I don't think you can beat. The shovel side, it's good for scraping snow. It's probably better suited again for making ice blocks and moving them. I use it more of a cook stand than anything. Last night I put it on the back side of the fire. Made for a pretty good reflector. But this is kind of just a unique piece of gear. I don't know if you can find them or not. I looked all over the internet for them for sale and not found any of them ones I have found were outrageous but maybe some of you crafty guys could put one together <coughs> 24 o'clock sun's already starting to drop really good normal up here. Laz is over there taking the cat nap. Found a good use for that there shovel. I tried to scrape a lot of snow with it. It does pretty good but it's kind of awkward with the handle going sideways to the, the blade there. <coughs> but a good use for it is it does kick back quite a bit of heat. Got our bannock. Got a pot, pot of uh, some noodles cooking up. Got some sausage in there with it. Um, crack a little Parmesan cheese on top of that. Kind of mix it all in together. A little bit of hot cocoa for the evening. Good stuff. I said we'd come back and we'd talk about the sled some more. This is everything that's in it. A pair of red feather snowshoes, which are generally I'm either wearing or have bungee corded to the outside. A three-part GI bag and an extra set of sleeping wear. I take off my snow-covered clothes and slip into those to sleep in. GI mitts, an extra poncho for a ground cover. A lot of times I, I just cut pine boughs or fir boughs or something, but as you can see, I was hanging out here in this castle reef drainage. It's not much pine, it's mostly aspens. Then the zebra pot and dog food and extra kettles. It makes safe space for the dog food on this smaller sled, which really makes you think about what you're going to bring with you. 
everything gets packed with dog food and as a dog eats it then I've got an extra kettle there and of course we brought the old Air Force saw and snow shovel which we'll come back to in a little bit some more and then that uh, sisal jute rope whatever you want to call it I believe it's sisal and that's it I like to pack the lighter stuff in the front and on top and the heavier stuff to the rear and that makes the nose of the sled kind of hang up on the, you know, not hang up as bad with weight, especially when you're getting into this thick stuff here. There's a lot of snags in the snow and your shoes will pile them down, but they'll go right across it. But the nose of the sled will hang up on the underbrush that's buried in the snow. And that helps by keeping the nose lighter and the tail heavier, keeps it nose up. So, oh yeah, and uh, a small hatchet. So. We'll get her laced up and get out of here and get to the next spot we're going to spend the tonight at.